to me a people. Look at this. God said, here are the guys in the cubicles with the folders and the paperwork and everything like that. God said they already have all the laws here. God said, I'll put them into their mind. Put them into their heart. So that the body, the person, will do the right thing and do what's right. God said, I'm not just going to put them on a wall somewhere. I'm going to put them right into their mind. So think about it. Think about the opposite of this. Devil comes up, helps these guys in lab coats with the technology, and now they have the ability to change and to implant what's in here. And instead of the laws of God, it's the law like written in the first and in the, in the uh, Satanic Bible, Anton LaVey, 1969, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. That's the technology putting that idea into people's brains. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, let's go back to Genesis chapter 6. This is God as in the days of Noah. Verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Think about it now. Think about our brain. Here's all the paintings going on, and here's all the guys with the paperwork. Okay, And mankind had gotten to such a point, such a state, and I think he had help. I think mankind had help with this. Number one, we know the tempter had already tempted and deceived Eve, and those spirits were at work. But we also know the corruption that was taking place by way of the sons of God mating or marrying the daughters of men. We already know that there was corruption going on. So much so now that in man's brain, in his mind, there's no law. There's no, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not. There's nothing like that. Every thought and every imagination was only evil continually. I get back to this movie, uh, Brainstorm. This guy, you know, he did this thing with this girl, recorded it, and then he just kept looping it over and over in his brain. Over and over and over and over. And I'll tell you this, you probably know some people that would love that kind of technology over and over and over and over. You see, people are going to give themselves over. They're not going to be taken by force. They're going to be given exactly what they want. Think about the incentive. The children of Israel go into Canaan land. What's the incentive to serve all these false gods? The incentive was is that these false gods had a goddess and she was to be worshipped a certain way. She was a fertility goddess. And so the Israelites go in there and they see that and they go, that's the religion I want right there. You see how it works? This technology is going to be embraced by people. And it's just going to corrupt their mind. And when it gets too far, God's going to say, we're going to flood again. Not with water but with iniquity in the last days. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 19. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people. Even Listen to this now. Oh, here we go. Even the fruit of their thoughts. Stop right here. The fruit of their thoughts. Well, let me finish reading the verse here. Because they have not hearkened unto my words, and nor to my law, but rejected it. The guys over here have the words and the law, and they're reading. They're the lawyers who are saying, uh, you can't do that. Uh, that's going to get us into a lot of trouble here. Uh, there's consequences for this. Dire consequences if we do this. These are the lawyers over here, okay? Telling us the law. Reading the law, saying the law says you can't do that, okay? This says, you know what? I want to do whatever I want to. I want to be free, okay? That's what they do. And God says, fine, that's what you're going to do. Here's, here's what's going to happen. You're going to get the fruit of your thoughts. Genesis chapter 3. Lucifer, the serpent, beguiling Eve, putting these ideas in her mind. And all she can think about now is 
that fruit, that fruit, that fruit. I want that fruit. I want. And so what happens? She gets exactly what she thought to do. And I'm telling you that we're headed as a civilization, as a society, as a world. We're headed to getting the fruits of our thoughts. Those thoughts may be helped along a little bit. We, we dealt with this idea of subliminal advertising here a few months ago. That process is already taking place. People are being programmed and trained and conditioned to think in a very specified way in order to bring about the fruit of the thoughts of mankind. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. Here's some of those fruits. For from within, out of the heart of men proceed, number one, evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. Number two, adulteries. Three, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye. Think about the back of the one dollar bill. Blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Okay? You've heard of this idea of what goes in comes must come out. And I can tell you that when you start putting all these bad... I, I'm going to sound like Joel Osteen for a minute, okay? So you just forgive me. It is true that the more we defile our mind, the more that is going to come out. Music has an effect upon our actions. The things that we watch and see have an effect upon our actions. We cannot deny that. This is why the Bible tells us to renew our mind, to think on these things. Philippians chapter 4 tells us, whatsoever things are true. So you know what? Get some Bible in your brain. Get some Word of God back into the places of your mind that it belongs in. And God will protect you from these days that are coming. Luke chapter 11 verse 17. Jesus, the Bible says, but he knowing their thoughts said unto them. Listen, I like this. He knowing the thought, the Bible knows the thoughts of men. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and the house divided against the house falleth. Now, I want you to think about, I love this. I love this because I used to think that everybody on the devil's team all had to play along the same way. I, I used to think that. It used to boggle me about who, you know, you hear the Bilderbergers and the Vatican and the Masons and the Muslims and, the, you know, all of these different groups, it seems like they're like not all working together. And I'm going, come on, guys, if you get it together, they're, they're not going to. They're a house divided. This is how we know that their kingdom is going to fall. Now, I want you to stop and think about this, okay? I love this, I love this. Re uh, J Daniel chapter 2. Okay, you go back to Daniel chapter 2. Here's what you find. You find an image. And it's standing upon its feet. And what's and, and I don't know, we don't think about this a whole lot, but I want to tell you what, my dad, before he died, was a diabetic, and he lost several toes because of uh, just sickness that he had, and it made him wobble when he walked. He couldn't stand up very well. You know why? The toes are the, about the strongest part of the body because when we stand up, the toes just keep us balanced. Okay? We don't know it, but when we stand, we lean, we tend, our body tends to sway because gravity pulls on us. And it's our toes that keep us standing up. They, they're constantly shifting and balancing. Constantly. Okay? In the kingdom, in Daniel chapter 2, in that fourth kingdom, you see, there's a problem. They mingled themselves with the seed of men, but here's what happened. The kingdom was partly strong. And partly weak. It was part iron, but it was part clay. And all that had to happen was, see, that kingdom already is divided. And Jesus, see, he knew their thoughts. That kingdom was already divided. And so the stone cut without hands doesn't attack the head. It doesn't go after the chest. It's not going after the legs. It's going after the, what the Bible calls the strength of sin, which is the law. There's ten commandments and ten toes. The stone hits those toes. They crumble. What happens to the image? That verse. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And a house divided against a house falleth. I love the Bible. I absolutely love it. Now, let me, let me explain to you this, the spiritual part of this. The spiritual side of these thoughts, these ideas, 
and dreams. We're going to talk about dreams here in a minute, too. Job chapter 4, verse 12. Listen to this. Now, a thing was secretly brought to me, and mine ear received a little thereof. In the thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falleth on men, fear came upon me, and trembling, which made all my bones to shake. Then a spirit, look at that, a spirit passed before my face, the hair of my flesh stood up. You know what the book of Job is making us aware of? That dreams and thoughts at times are spiritually motivated, spiritually seated, spiritually conceived by a spirit. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Why? Because spirits want to control your mind. The article that we read at the beginning of this broadcast talked about the ability. The ability to, to implant thoughts back into people's heads. The technology came from, here's the article here we're going to look at, the technology came from the ability to read the thoughts to begin with, map them out, and to show what they were. So this article here, Brain Scanner, can record your dreams on video. Just a few weeks ago, we posted about how brain patterns can reveal almost exactly what you're thinking. Now researchers at UC Berkeley have figured out how to extract what you're picturing inside your head, and they can play it back on video. And so here's, here's the technology now. Now we're going to we're gonna get into the dream idea. Okay? Uh, what are dreams? What are dreams? We're going to talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, and, and we'll get into the spiritual idea. But I want you to think about this thing for a minute. That, and the psychology idea behind dreams is that uh, your brain goes into very, 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 very deep uh, sleep. And um, some psychologists, and I kind of like this idea, God developed inside of our brain a way for us to carry out the garbage every day. Uh, we just kind of run through scenarios in our mind, fears that we might have or whatever, things that we've just kind of held back on, and the brain is going and saying, eh, we need to throw this stuff out. Okay, and that's, that, that may be it. But the idea is, can dreams be, uh, be inspired either by spirits or by technology? And the answer absolutely is yes. Now that we have the technology now to learn how to read the dreams, now we have the technology to be able to go in and control the dreams. I mentioned the movie back in the 1980s called uh, Brainstorm. There was another one came out not too long after that um, called Dreamscape. And it was about th this g government military project of getting inside people's dreams and making things happen. We talked about this when we talked about how the brain works. A movie called Inception. These people were masters at going, listen to this, going inside, down four layers into a person's dream and implanting the seed of a thought so that that seed of a thought would spring up and become the fruit of what it is that they desire. You see, there's like they're reading the Bible and writing movie scripts because this Bible is right. The fruit of people's thoughts is going to come to pass one of these days. And that's what the movie Inception is all about. The word Inception is related to the word Conception. And we use the word Conception both in the, in the physical realm of a man and a woman conceiving a child and with the idea of us conceiving a thought inside of our mind and now we have the technology to be able to control the outcome of what people think we're bringing we are bringing about in this world the ability to produce the dreams and the thoughts that will bring in the new world order that will bring in the kingdom of the antichrist that will give people the fruit of their thoughts. God says, okay, I, I know what you're thinking because I can know your thoughts and I'm going to give you exactly what you wanted. Those who love the Lord with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind.